Here we are at the uh, Hollywood Medieval Torture Museum. Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the West. More specifically, we are in Hollywood, California. We are out here on the boulevard, and I wanted to check out a museum I saw had popped up recently here on Hollywood Boulevard. Now, years ago, while in St. Augustine, Florida, I stumbled upon a torture museum in the top floor of an ice cream parlor, and uh, it was a uh, most horrific and uh, graphic experience, but ended up uh, seeing relatives of this museum popping up. A medieval torture museum popped up in Chicago, Illinois. I got a chance to visit that uh, within the last couple years. At a, but just the, the, the LA version, the Hollywood version of the torture museum, uh, just a joke, just opened up within the last year. I'm not, I'm not actually not doing my intro right over there because the their music is so loud. There's someone blasting music with a uh, with a boombox over there, so not able to uh, to do an intro without getting a copyright claim from the thundering music. But I figure since we are out here in. Uh, in Hollywood, we would check out their version of the Torture Museum. So, uh, are you ready for some torture? <laughs> Please, follow me. All right, entering the Torture Museum, you can see a gentleman there holding a severed head. Now they have uh, an audio guide that goes along with the tour, but they also have a ghost hunting app where you can uh, apparently communicate with go ghosts that have been tortured. All right, we have the wall of skulls there, but it is time to head into the basement here to uh, experience all the torture. It says, are you brave enough? I definitely am. Very rarely am I, am I startled or scared. All right, heading inside. All right, this individual here is undergoing several uh, several different methods of torture. This is the Gimplane Smile. It says Gimplane there. So it's kind of like the smile that uh, Heath Ledger had in uh, The Dark Knight, the Joker character. And then also, he's carrying these, uh, these blocks here. You notice they're shaped like cards and shaped like dice. So if someone had a problem with gambling as a form of punishment, they would make them wear these heavy uh, chains that would have uh, cards and dice on them. So not only was it uncomfortable and humiliating, but everyone knew exactly what your deal was. And our next form of torture is the imprisonment in a cage. I've heard these called pirate cages before, where it's a very small cage that someone's meant to stand in. It says that it would be made so they couldn't sit down and that their limbs would become deformed. You can actually see the limbs there becoming deformed. The, the ankles are getting all twisted and, uh, and weird. See, I was curious about this ghost hunting experience. They said that the app would allow you to detect ghosts down here in the torture chamber. So let's get start. Walk around slowly to detect supernatural entities. So we will walk around. Okay, check this out. It just said a ghost was detected. It says age 429 years. So a 429 year old ghost was detected. It says open legend. Let's see what that does. So the ghost that we found was uh, Lucas the Inquisitor. Said he uh, was, was in a hurry, he was in a rush, and he accidentally sentenced someone to death. Sentenced the person to be executed, which you know, is why we need to slow down. We can't always be trying to rush through things. We gotta make sure we're, uh, we look over everything and do it correctly. It says he cannot rest until he finds the person that he mistakenly had executed in order to apologize to them. This is the fork of the heretic being used on this gentleman here uses a punishment if you are you know go against the uh, the religion that uh, the people in charge are promoting and see it like straps to the neck it pokes you 
under your chin and then digs into your chest, making it very uncomfortable to uh, to talk, or really, it makes it just really uncomfortable to even exist. And the walls all over the entire museum covered in not only pictures of torture, but torture implements. You know, these things here could be used for all sorts of poking, prodding, poking, and, and pulling, and pushing, and cutting, and, 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 and mangling, and twisting, and, and all sorts of other horrific things. This is the flagellation section. Uh, essentially, flagellation is whipping people. See her tied to the uh, board there. Has some uh, marks there on her back from these whipping tools. Let's see up there, they just have a, a wall full of whips that would be used to, to whip someone. But this is possibly uh, possibly the worst whip here, the Cat of Nine tail. Well, actually, is that a Cat of Nine tails? It only has five tails. But yeah, it's a chain. It's got hooks, like old nails, old rusty nails, and they would use that to whip your back with. I can't think of anything I would want to have my back whipped less than that thing. This here talks about the scalding of the feet. You can see the person tied down there with their feet sticking out. And there's a little pot of oil where they would be able to burn someone's feet. That's like really sadistic. You think about the burning someone's bottoms of their feet. That makes it so difficult to walk around, so difficult to uh, even put your shoes on or even your socks. In the center of the room here we have the Sicilian bowl. It's a really cruel and strange way to torture and, uh, and execute people. You'd actually place someone inside the bowl and then you see they'd start a fire underneath and the, the metal would heat up and, and just cook the person inside. You, you wonder why, why does it have to be shaped like a bowl? That's the part I'm unclear about on, on why it has to be bowl shaped. But apparently uh, the, the person invented it, showed it to their king and the king liked it so much but wanted it tested out, so he placed the creator inside the bowl and actually killed him. So the, the creator of the bowl was his first, uh, was the bowl's first victim. We have a rope here, so let's see what, uh, we can lift the hatch there and see what is inside the bowl. Oh my gosh, there's a burning human in there. You can see he hates, he hates being inside, uh, inside the bowl, so. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, it's, it's a sad, sad fate for anyone there. It says that this is punishment for uh, gossipers and slanderers. They would uh, take their tongue and nail them to a pulse. This uh, this guy, he was, he was spreading some gossip, spread, spreading some hot goss, and uh, talking talking some smack about uh, about everybody. And uh, he had. Uh, had to have his tongue nailed to a, a, a post. I don't know, it seems the punishment may be, may be disproportionate to, uh, to the crime, to, yeah. yeah. You know, words can hurt, I admit it, words can hurt, but uh, not nearly as much as a nail in your tongue. There are some very uncomfortable furniture. This is the uh, chair from Kunika, and it says this would be used as an interrogation device so you'd have someone's head in here you got all the different cranks you can turn that makes makes make screws go into their flesh that makes a screw go up under their chin that's a screw between the eyes that's a hook in your nose this comes down and squishes the top of your head this is all uh, all very sadistic and yeah I mean I would I, I, I would hate I would hate to be interrogated like that I mean um, you know, in interrogating people with torture, by the way, there's been scientific evidence that, that people, when people are being tortured, they don't actually confess. They just tell the torturer whatever they want to hear. So they're not necessarily telling the truth, they're just telling whatever it needs to be that they will, uh, will not be tortured. And look at down here, yeah, it's even got some screws for your feet, screws for your ankles. Oh, but they did, uh, they did leave a hole in case you, uh, in case you poop yourself. It's the impalement section over here, the, the preferred torture of a one Vlad, Vlad Dracul, Vlad the Impaler, and yeah, you just basically, this one's simple, you take a person and you put a stick through them. And there is the pendulum, it's like a big hanging axe 
that uh, would you would swing back and forth and saw prisoners. Actually, see there is a rope on this one too, so we can pull this rope here. Oh, there we go. We get a good uh, a good swing there going for the pendulum. We can chop up this uh, pile of skulls here. This is the chair of inquiries. This is another interrogation device. And uh, yeah, it's just a really uncomfortable chair. It's got these spikes in it, but it actually says in addition to, uh, to having spikes in it, they would actually start a fire under the seat so that the spikes would be searing hot. And yeah, who comes up with this stuff? Who, who, th who thinks up that this is a good way to treat our fellow humans? I have an interesting fact here. This is the throne, which you'd actually you'd hang upside down. They put your feet in these top parts and your body would hang down this way. And uh, yeah, the interesting thing though is in the, in the little uh, explanation here, it says that uh, the people that regulated torture, so apparently there was like laws on what kind of torture you could use. It said that this was only allowed to be used once during an individual inter interrogation. You can only put someone in this one time while interrogating them. Uh, unfortunately, it says they got around that because they would use it once, but they would use it for days at a time, which is kind of cheating. You notice this guy here appears to be in a lot of pain, in a very uncomfortable situation. And uh, I think you might be making the same face he is making if you had to undergo what he is uh, undergoing. He has uh, mice or rodents placed on his chest under a cage. They start a fire on the top of the cage, which frightens the animal. And the animal starts burrowing into his skin, inside of his body, which, um, yikes it's uh that's not a good way to treat a person and that's not a good way to treat a treat a little mouse either let's take a break from all the torture and see if we can find another ghost oh we can see there on our ghost detector I actually spotted a ghost oh we, oh do you see that you can see the ghost that just popped up there the spooky figure that's right in front of us says the ghost is uh, 222 years old that we just found you can actually snap a snap a photo of uh, of that ghost so we can remember it. So this is the ghost of Warm Me Up Mary. It says that uh, Mary was a very cold person. She didn't have money for firewood. She was freezing. She uh, she was told by an individual that he would give her some firewood as long as that she could provide him with a baby. So she actually kidnapped a baby and gave him the baby. But when they found out that that she had kidnapped a baby. They punished her by placing her in boiling water, which is ironic because she always wanted to, wanted to be warm and she finally was warm, but uh, not in the way she wanted to. She was in a place with boiling water, which is a horrible way to warm up. This is the anchor, says it was used during the Spanish Inquisition. You can see it kind of just locks you in a rather uncomfortable position. You, know, you can't move your feet, you can't move your head, you just can't get in a comfy position no matter how much you try and then uh you get infection too you definitely uh that 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 could that could end up getting really really nasty here is a manual guillotine here but, but that means there isn't there isn't the blade that comes dropping you just have to uh have to put someone's head there and then chop it off yourself with uh, a hammer i mean i guess you could knock someone's head off with a hammer. Oh, that's that's off. There's a pillory. You know, you'd, someone would stick their head and their hands through there, and they'd be locked in place as a form of public humiliation. And then the uh, the cauldron there. That's where you just place someone in and boil them. Um, that's not as much humiliating as it just is uh, horrifying and uh, and painful. This is the double violin for gossipers. I guess this woman here is a gossiper. She's been, again, spreading spreading the hot goss around. And uh, yeah, and then apparently this would be used, two women that were gossiping about each other would be placed in this device and they'd be looking forward to, so they both have to be staring at each other while locked in this device. So that would get, that would get really awkward really fast. Being, uh, being, being, have to stare at someone that you maybe someone you don't even necessarily like that much, and being locked in a in a device that forces you to uh, 
stare at each other nonstop. Then the gallows. People are uh, hung by the neck. That guy got a bag over his head. That guy does not. I think I would, uh, I don't know. I might take the bag. What do you think? Would you, would you put the bag over your head or just go, go with being able to see? I think the bag might be uh, an improvement. Down this hallway, have uh, different implements. Oh, there's like a, just a spiky club to hit someone with. It's very dark in here, but you can peek in there. That's the cradle of Judah. Just like a big pointy triangle spike and then someone's put right in the middle and I guess their, their, their arms and legs tied so they're forced to balance on the little pointy bit and uh, leads to great and miserable discomfort. This is the this is the dismemberment section and what's in this box? What's in the box? Because we have to pull the rope to see what's in the box there. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a it's a box of dead chopped off body parts. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's close that. We don't we don't need to see that. The brutal executioner there. There is his uh, executioner saw up above him. The big saw that he'd used to dismember people. Yeah, has the axe there as well. Force someone to sit on that stump and then chop their head off. Here's another one of these cages. I guess this is like a wooden version and yeah it seems like it would be uh, incredibly uncomfortable to have to to sit in a or stand rather you can't even say you have to stand in uh, in this cage and uh, that would hurt your back hurt your feet hurt everything in your entire body then we have the automatic guillotine we saw the uh, manual guillotine back there you can see the person they're pretty simple person lays there, the blade comes down and chops their head off. Now, it looks like, they do have a rope here, it looks like at one point you could raise and lower the guillotine, but uh, I think it's uh, permanently in its downward position. The thing about torture is you really don't even have to be that, uh, that creative, you just have to be sick and twisted. You can see just the person there laying on a grill. You've got the fire under the grill there, uh, just just grilling someone alive like a like a flame kissed whopper. And you have the wheel of torture here, and I don't know exactly uh, the whole process of which the torture occurs, but you can see this uh, this human here has become very very weathered and depleted as he's uh, strapped to this wheel. I don't know if they spun him around really fast or something like that. You have the wall of finger torture there these uh these hands have been tortured in various ways i got a nail through that one that one's got uh something shoved under the fingernails that one's just got fingers chopped off using these horrible implements here and uh this guy here i think he's actually relieved that he had his hands chopped off because then he doesn't have to endure any more hand torture yeah i don't know these wheels uh, uh, there's so much horror on these, uh, on just those wagon wheels. What are they, what are they doing to people on these wheels? Now most of these victims are from the medieval time period, but this gentleman here, he's from the uh, 1950s era Colombian Civil War, where he was given a Colombian necktie, which means that's when they, they cut a hole under your mouth and they pull your tongue through it. Uh, that's, yeah, that's not the necktie you want for Father's Day. I don't know where these stairs go. See there's some skulls there, in some sort of torture cage. This basket here is a basket used for snake torture. If you can uh, peer in. Oh, he's that guy there. Okay, he's got some snakes there down on his lap. And it looks like they've they've bit him all over his body. Just yeah, you don't you don't want to be in a in a wicker basket full of snakes. That's always a recipe for disaster. This guy here has had his eyes burned out oh my gosh buddy what happened to your what happened to your eyes oh wait oh oh there they are there's there's his eyes it's a torture table and uh, you can see the the masked torturer there getting ready with his uh his little meat hooks do all sorts of horrible things on a uh, torture table 
it's really just whatever your sick imagination uh, can lead you to. It looks back here like they even got like a like an oven to uh, to torture people with. Here's a table full of brands. These are for like sticking on a person. You get this hot and then you jam it onto someone's flesh and you can make, oh look that one, you can make a little floor de lease in their back. But no one wants a floor de lease branded in their back, at least not unconsensually. I mean I know some people have gotten brands as like a form of tattoo or body modification, but uh, you should never brand anyone who doesn't want to be branded. Here's some little mini brands and these little tiny marks on people. Here are masks of shame. These would be put on people as a form of humiliation and uh, punishment. See, this one would be like, you'd have to wear this mask with a big trumpet on front if you're like a gossiper. Man, they really hated gossipers back in the day. So this shows that, that you have a big mouth, that you talk like you have a big horn in your face. And this one, this just makes you look like a big, goofy weirdo. There's a pig mask there. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of crazy things. It would definitely be embarrassing having to walk around uh, with one of these on your head. This one's even got a little bell on the front so it makes noise and everyone can uh, hear that you're coming and they can look at your dumb mask. Here's a witch dunking device to dunk a witch in a barrel of water to see if she was a witch or not. The only catch was the only way to prove you are not a witch is by drowning because normal people drown underwater, witches apparently don't. So really, once you find yourself in that position, it's just a, a lose-lose. But uh, I think you can actually operate this, uh, this dunking mechanism here. Sorry. Some head and hand vices. And this guy, unfortunately, is being is having his head and his hand viced at the same time. Oh, look at this. He's just, he has an excruciating, an absolutely excruciating headache. It's also, look, there's a cockroach right there. And he's got ants crawling on his hand. He's just got so many bad things happening to him right now. It's a very bad, horrible, no good day. This is not a fun horsey ride right here. This woman has weights tied to her feet to uh, cause excruciating pain as she sits on that horse. We see some insect torturing here. This person locked in a barrel, but they actually have it uh, cut open to see what's going on inside the barrel. So basically, normally you just have his head sticking out of the barrel, but uh, inside the barrel is where all the horror is happening. He's covered in tarantulas, scorpions, and ants. Oh my goodness. And if the big metal humiliating masks weren't bad enough. Here's some torture shoes, different uh, devices that are strapped to feet with the goal of making walking the worst thing that ever happened to you. Well, this chain here just got a big rock. Yeah, that's like a, just tie a rock to your leg. You can see the torturer there preparing a ridiculously big torture boot. We have burning at the stake. This is the European way of uh, punishing witches, or not punishing, but just you know, executing or killing uh, people suspected of witchcraft. I know in the, in the United States in Salem, they used hanging as a method. Sometimes there's misconception that they burned witches in Salem. Oh my gosh, over here we got the, the world's worst dentist. Oh my gosh, don't open your mouth. Don't say, ah, nothing good is gonna come of this. Again with the, with the wheels here. Wheels do such terrible things. Now I must commend the uh, Medieval Torture Museum for this. They have the Iron Maiden here, but it actually does explain the Iron Maiden uh, was not not a medieval torture device. There was uh, it was originally created in the 1950s as a uh, as a fake medieval torture device. It was on display in Germany, and they claimed that it was an actual medieval torture device, but it's actually a modern fabrication. So they actually do mention that, that the uh, Iron Maiden was, uh, was not so legit. This guy here is a victim of the Bloody Eagle, and um, I would take you around back and show you his back, but it's just too horrifying 
the, uh, they actually cut your back open and pull your organs out to give you a set of wings. Which, why? Why would you do that to someone? You have execution by press crushing. This person's been crushed under these two spiky boards. And I have got a hand on the rope here so we can see if we can, uh, we can lift up the... There, oh yeah, there we go. We're lifting up. I'm trying to rescue you, buddy. Oh my gosh, I can't hold on anymore. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you can see his face. His face was all, was all messed up from the spikes. And here's their mascot of the medieval torture museum. This horrifying, monstrous executioner there. Oh my gosh, look at, look at his face. That is, that is a face that has no compassion for any man, woman, and child on this planet. Here is the photo op room in here and they actually provide a ring light to help you take uh, better selfies, which that's actually pretty nice. All right, I think I'm the executioner, the king of torture. But I don't know, who's this? Some sort of, some sort of torture lady? This is a metal for drunkenness as it's created by uh, the Russians in the 1700s. So you'd win, quote, win a medal for drunkenness and this giant heavy, oh yeah, that's so heavy. This giant medal would be strapped to your body so you could, you could, you could walk around with this massive 17, it's a 17 pound uh, medal for drunkenness. Hooray, it's, it's a very, it's a major award. Look at this, I won myself a medal. What's it for? Oh, it's for, it's for drunkenness. Oh, it's also 17 pounds and I'm forced to wear it through the, through the, through every moment of my life. Uh, I, somehow I, I, uh, I almost wish that I hadn't uh, dedicated my life to a life of drunkenness. The witch scales here, you can see, uh, you get on there and it can determine if you are an angel, a saint, a knight, a witch, a goblin, or an imp. Oh, you definitely don't want to be an imp. That's uh, that's bad. So I guess we'll uh, I'll get on there and see uh, see which one I am. All right, stepped on the the witch scale. Let's see here. Oh, what am I? What is that? Oh, I'm a knight. Knight. That's one of the good ones, I think. Definitely didn't want to be a be a be a witch or a goblin or an imp, but I think I'm safe. I think that uh, that means that I don't get tortured. Oh man, this guy. I can tell this guy just hates being in a barrel. Actually, no man, no man should have to live as half barrel, half man. There's horrible things in this barrel. Oh look, there's a witch, a witch up there. Time for the horror to be over as we head up and out of the Los Angeles Hollywood Torture Museum. What is that? It is some sort of some sort of a 7-Eleven robot here. I don't know where he's going. This is a, a robot traveling down Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, where's he? Where's he going? Where's he going to deliver to? It's this robot wandering, wandering down the street here. Is it is it weird that I'm following it? Should I not follow it? Am I making it probably making it nervous? But uh, yeah, this is what a time to be alive where we have uh, robot robot carts walking uh, down the street making deliver. I think he's making delivery, uh, or at least that's what I assume. Oh, he's trying to get away from me. I think I've, yeah, I've officially made him nervous. I wonder what happens, I mean, if hooligans <laughs> smashed him and, and they know that he's carrying something delicious or something valuable, <laughs> something from 7-Eleven in his belly, people are gonna knock him over and take him. But uh, yeah, I think I'm making him nervous. Oh, he's going down the, making a, 
making a turn there. Is he gonna try to cross the street? Is he gonna make, is he gonna cross the street? Is that little robot, is he being steered? Is there someone like steering him off site? All right, all right, little robot. Go and, uh, go and make your delivery. Hope he makes it there safely. What is that, it's the hoop bus? It's got a basketball hoop on the front. The game that, what is, what's, what's the hoop bus? Hollywood, man. So thank you for joining me here for another wild night on Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, the Torture Museum, definitely, like I, I said, the event of these, it's my third of the three torture museums that have popped up around the country, and they're all incredibly intense. This one was, so thank you for joining me here for another wild night on Hollywood Boulevard. This is the third of the three uh, torture museums that I visited, um, and they're all they're very intense. It's, 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 you know, torture torture is no joke. It's uh, you know they did they did reiterate in the museum torture is still a thing. It's real, and uh, it's just a horrible a horrible thing in some way. It's, I think it is it is it's beneficial to bring bring to light some of the the awful things that the human beings do to each other. So. Uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for, for joining me tonight. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, instead of donating to Patreon, $3 or more, we'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also have enamel pins in the Etsy shop, and I'm now doing cameos. So if you'd like a personalized greeting, a personalized message for yourself or for someone else, all that information is in the description of this video. And uh, all that helps keep this train on the track, this witch dunked in the water, and this uh, dirigible of torture high in the air. Till next time, my friends, this one's in the bag. I try, I try, sorry.